morning, everyone. My name is Sarah. I'm, I'm Karen. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, next to me, we have Karen from JCBC and then Maple from Hello. Hong Kong Housing Society. So thank you for joining us today. So this session is the briefing section for the intergenerational place-based design competition, Hong Kong Housing Society Parker's Garden. We hope the briefing session is going to last for about one and a half hour. If you have any questions, please leave it as a chat message so that uh, we will collect all the questions and then answer at the back of, um, of this session. So for today's rundown, we are going to talk about the whole competition, the idea behind the competition, the competition mechanism, and also the site introduction of Prosperous Garden by Mabel. If you have any questions in between, feel free to leave it at the message box so that uh, we can reply to you or uh, we'll pause if we need it. Okay. And on this page, on the right hand side of the slide, you will have a different QR code link to the competition website, our Facebook page, and also a linking group, which we will explain further in details later on. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the first session will be the introduction of the competition by Karen, who is the project lead and also a project manager spatial from JCCC. Okay, so let's hold on. Hi, good morning, everyone. I uh, just wanted to say a big thank you for joining us today. Most Hi, good morning, everyone. Just want to thank everybody for joining us today uh, to listen to our briefing section. So we're just going to explain a little bit uh, the idea behind this competition. And we also invited Sarah, who is uh, from One Byte, who uh, is also our competition secretariat, to talk about the mechanisms after my presentation. The last section, we will, uh, we will end with Mabel, uh, who's from uh, uh, Hong, Hong Kong Society, talk a little bit more about Prosperous Garden to give you some ideas about uh, what you need to uh, think about uh, when you design this uh, project. So uh, let's get started. Oops. Okay, so why are we doing this uh, at JCDC? Uh, JCDC is a, uh, is a department at PolyU actually, uh, Pol uh, Polytechnic University of Hong Kong. And uh, we are here to uh, to talk about different social issues, and we want to give uh, give some uh, give a platform uh, to create a platform to support social innovation and improve the well being of the community of Hong Kong. So that's why we want to gather everybody from different expert uh, from different expertise and uh, from different sectors to try to think about uh, what we can do together to improve the life and well being of Hong Kong people. We very much emphasize. Uh, different aspects. Uh, so the first one is the social impact. So we don't want to just do things. We want to uh, actually do something that is implementable in, in one way or the other. So that's why we very much focus on prototyping and participatory co-creation, which is why we invited everybody to join us uh, uh, to design this, uh, to design Prosperous Garden and to do this competition together with us. Uh, also, we're here to uh, to uh, express or to create opportunities uh, for our poly departments to create something that is uh, that is value adding for the community. So that's why we talk about academic impacts. So we talk about a lot of uh, applied researches and service learning. So you will see uh, later on that we will create some videos uh, that we will share some some kind of um, applied uh, researches that we uh, poly is developing developing and uh, that can be used for reference by everybody. Uh, the third part is large transfer. So when we created all these uh, prototypes uh, that you, you will join us in creating, we want to share with people. So it's not just Hong Kong, so maybe internationally, if uh, other people are interested in this idea, they can develop this further. 
Uh, we are incredibly lucky to have uh, the uh, Hong Kong Jockey Club a Charity Trust to fund our project, uh, for to fund our operation, which is called Operation So Inno. It's a three-year program, and it consists of uh, four different aspects of it, which is on, on the right-hand side. So, uh, yeah, you can go through it in, in further details. Uh, now, DC, uh, what do what do we really do after talking about uh, everything? Uh, so, what 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 what, are, what is the social impact that you're trying to do? What what sort of thing you're trying to look at? So, we're looking at double aging. Uh, what what is double aging? Uh, it can be explained very clearly in the four pictures below. So, we're talking about population aging and building aging in Hong Kong, which uh, we think that is actually a very unique phenomenon because both uh, both suffer aging issues is really escalating in Hong Kong. People in Hong Kong are aging really rapidly and also our infrastructure and all our buildings are really approaching an age that, that a life cycle we need to uh, review what we need to do uh, in order to help Hong Kong to uh, create a very sustainable future to increase the resilience of the city. So we really do want to see what we what we can do and help the government or help private sector or even NGOs. So uh, yeah, that's why we want to put all the resources together from, from different parts of the community. Uh, to go, go a little bit further to explain why we really want to do intergeneration play space, uh, the, the entry point is we want to think about how we can reimagine public space. Uh, uh, that is in relation to the changing population needs because we are we are well as I've already said we are we are uh, having a very aging population in Hong Kong. These are some of the detailed uh, breakdown or some very hard data that you can make reference to. So uh, the first one is uh, we have a lot of elderly singleton and elderly doubleton. Elderly doubleton means that two old people depending on each other. They don't have family. They don't have children so they are really on their own so loneliness is a great issue and also like who will look after them if they are really uh if the health is dec declining so the second thing is about 2026 our uh our population our, our old uh, population uh they will be requiring a lot more long-term services and also early care services so it pl uh, places a lot of uh uh uh, pressure on our government budgets and also uh, on the overall resources. So do we need to build more elderly homes? Do we need to uh, provide a lot more uh, hospital places that are more catered to the um, uh, old, uh, the aging population? We all need to think about all these things. And by 64, a third of the population will be over 65 which is really, really quite a scary figure. If you think about it, uh, it's already, uh, we're talking about like 40 years later. So we need to start thinking about what we should be, uh, what we should be providing for our aging population and also start thinking about the budget implications. Uh, now, all these are very, very, uh, very depressing facts maybe, but uh, we can do something about it. So that's why we're talking about social innovation here. So uh, what we can do is to think about what, uh, what we can do to empower our uh, aging population uh, to encourage them to uh, live independently, especially for uh, the first point when we talk about loneliness and uh, healthcare management, that what we can do to help them to live a very long and happy life. Uh, and also we want to prevent premature institu institutionalization. So we reduce their, lo their long-term care needs and they can stay in the local community and age in place. So they don't need to uh, start depending on people to care for them. They can look after themselves. They also have confidence uh, in order to live on their own longer. Uh, at the very same time, like we can't just look uh, look uh, after our aging population. There is also a younger population that we look uh, need to take care of. Uh, this chart is very interesting. It's from uh, Civic Exchange in 2018. They did an open space uh, opinion survey and they surveyed uh, 3,600 people uh, across 18 districts in Hong Kong. So uh, you can see like uh, they, um, the data covers are everybody from 16 to 70 plus. And you can see that uh, a box that I highlighted uh, in red, uh, that is the second highest um, 
demand uh, uh, the, the, play, uh, the importance that they place on uh, open space. The first one is the first uh, arrow, which is physical fitness. Everybody wants a uh, public space to help them to be physically fit. So it's not just about running. Uh, they could be like, you know, playing balls. They could be, uh, they can be walking around as well. Uh, the box in red, uh, uh, we want to see like how, um, how people place different emphasis. Uh, so you will see that people aging from 30 to 59, they place quite a lot of emphasis on the importance of open space to help them to relieve their stress, which is something that we really want to see what we can do in not uh, on top of physical fitness. We want to see what we can do to help with their mental health uh, well, well-being as well. And uh, interestingly, if you look at a 40 to 49 year old category, they also place equal emphasis on uh, uh, the importance of open space to help them to uh, to increase their family time. So they, for example, if they bring the kids to the parks or they look after the elderly, uh, they uh, they take them down to, for, for a walk. Uh, so it's really quite important to look at the spread of like uh, what pe uh, of other people, like what sort of emphasis they put uh, on the importance of open space. Last of all, we need to look at um, 67 year old plus, they look at, um, open space as a place for them to create, uh, to, to support their social life. So that's why we also place quite a lot of emphasis on intergenerational play. We don't want them to just sit in the park, don't want to just play chess, don't want them to just, you know, sit there, do nothing and watch people. We want them to do something to, uh, to feel connected to the community again. Now, the connection to the community arrow that I put in there, I want people that are uh, from all aspects, uh, for, from uh, different sectors and different disciplines to think about. It seems like Hong Kong people, they place a lot less emphasis or, or they, they see um, open space as, uh, you know, they might not be able to support, uh, they want them to, uh, open space to support uh, them to connect to the community, but they don't feel like uh, it might be doing so much. Uh, so we start to think about, is it a quantity or is it the quality of public space that we can, uh, we can think about the design interventions that put in, uh, that we can put in the, um, the place based design. Okay, so this is uh, a very complicated model uh, that we JCDC put uh, put up uh, to start looking at double aging and double smart. I won't go into details, don't worry. Uh, I just want you to look at smart neighborhood, the third option down. So when we talk about public space reinvention, we are trying to see like, how smart city and smart, uh, and smart technology can help to uh, tackle the double aging problem. And uh, one, of the issue, uh, one of the things that we're looking at is public space reinvention, which is what we're doing. Now, uh, all the hot, uh, hardcore, uh, you know, the uh, marketing stuff is over. So we'll talk about the, the real deal. So um, the intergeneration place based design competition. Let's go through it in detail. So why do we do intergeneration play space? So uh, I've already talked about the double aging, double smart issue. Uh, I want to emphasize the importance of the user experience led design and multidisciplinary problem solving in this, uh, in this design competition. So we want uh, people to start thinking about uh, different things like play is for people of all ages abilities. So that's why we don't want to just engage the professionals. We want you to start looking at uh, how different users uh, think about uh, open space. So that's why we were showing you the, the table and everything else that you can uh, make reference to. And we, uh, as I already emphasized, we want to stimulate the reimagination of public space. So we want you to think about like, what, uh, what, sort of, uh, what sort of experience you have when you go into the park and you can also ask your family or your friends what they think about it. Uh, so we also think about the positive effects of intergenerational interaction. Uh, for those that are not familiar with this uh, concept, so uh, uh, in different countries, they already started thinking about uh, mixing the elderly population and the younger population together in order to benefit each other. For example, the elderly centers and the kindergarten, they put, it to, uh, put them together in the same building and they realize that their the social ability, the think intellectual ability, et cetera, they, or even the mental well-being, they have all increased. So we want to see how we can integrate those ideas in the public space and also reap the benefits of that, uh, uh, that uh, aspect. So the last of all is to, uh, that's the re, uh, in connection with the elderly, so you promote self-care, well-being management and also support aging in place. Uh, um, my colleagues are going to talk about aging in place a little bit later on if uh, you're not familiar with the concept. 
Uh, so just to go back a little bit, like what we have done before, uh, we have already co uh, done some co-creation workshops and a symposium uh, back in 2019. So we have some data on what people think about uh, intergeneration play just to test the idea at that point and also to get us some thoughts on what uh, uh, what the, the design considerations that have been taken into account. So you can see the arrow, we are progressing into the right box in the action project stage, which we're trying to see the prototype design. Uh, if you want more information, you can go uh, go to the links below to see what, what, uh, what have been discussed. Uh, just a little bit about why we're working together with uh, Hong Kong Housing Society to deliver this uh, action project. So Housing Society is the housing laboratory of Hong Kong. They want to try to test different ideas and also see how we can improve the quality of housing for people of Hong Kong. So they want to see how they can meet the needs of the aging population, aging residents, and also the future proof uh, their estates. Uh, so. You can read about our aspirations later on because uh, I've been reminded that I don't have a lot of time left. Now, uh, what people said uh, during the co-creation workshop, uh, there are loads of things that they have said, but I, I, already, um, I put some ideas of what they uh, expressed before uh, in these bubbles. So example, like it's too hot in open area. There isn't anything suitable for my toddler to play. You know, I uh, for the elderly, they said, I want to hold on to the rails to stretch. Uh, I want hooks. It's all different things. It's very small things, but then uh, we we start to think about oh, so there are some design considerations that we can integrate into our public space design. So we hand it over to you to think about how you can integrate all these ideas. Uh, some design considerations. Uh, this is very important. I would say uh, you you need to look through the details in the uh, project brief. Uh, sorry, in the competition brief. But uh, during the co-creation workshops, we summarize six design considerations. Uh, so the first one is spatial integration. Uh, age neutral design, intergeneration play space equipment, which is similar for number two and number three, uh, but we emphasize the importance of different age groups playing together. Uh, number four is to make use of the unique spatial character of the place. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, Prospect Garden is a flat uh, space, so you can think about different things, but you can uh, but you also need to consider different uh, use uh, different management issues uh, because it's a privately owned public space. And the last of all, you need to think about how we you can make use of the technology or the uh, IoT Internet of Things, uh, so to uh, in, uh, and, uh, encourage the elderly to uh, exercise more often, and also to track and see how this uh, play space really did uh, improve intergeneration play. So that's why we quite emphasize on the technology part. What we are looking for. Uh, you can also read through all these. Uh, this is all in the competition brief and on our website. So I will only emphasize on the last point. You need to consider the hardware and the software. You don't just think about, okay, so this is a pretty design and it will get implemented. You need to think about how that can support uh, a housing society or even uh, the, uh, the users, uh, how they can use the space in future. So for example, the nurses, they can be there on site to train and help the elderly to think about how they can uh, use the uh, multi uh, multifunctional play equipment to stretch, uh, to reduce pain from arthritis, and also see, for example, if um, if they have heart disease, uh, what sort of exercise, what's the frequency of exercise that they can take in order to do, uh, to really improve them, but not to over-exercise them. Because we realize that quite a lot of elderly, they just do the exercise like that, but they don't know uh, the, uh, the correct strength to use and they ended up hurting themselves. So sensory play is also quite important. We don't just want another elderly fitness uh, park. We want uh, the children and also the elderly, and also the adults uh, to play together. So we're quite emphasized on sensory, you know, five senses. Uh, the NC architects will know what I'm talking about. So it's not just the sense of, it's not just seeing, you also hear, uh, you also touch and all the other things. You need to take care of that. Uh, horticultural therapy is quite interesting, right? So you can start thinking about like different things like urban farms. Uh, I'm not giving you ideas that you can explore how that can uh, be tied into the intergeneration place-based idea. And last of all, you can also think about uh, 
trying to dementia proof the place because uh, Prospect Garden, as you will know in, in, uh, in uh, Mabel's presentation, there's quite a high percentage of elderly in the area. So you, you start to think about how all these things can be integrated and also technology can, can also help the dementia patients as well. Okay, some very, very, uh, oops, why is it doing this? Okay, so I'll give you some tips uh, so you can start to see what we can uh, and what you can think about. Uh, the four bubbles on the left are for those that are architects, planners, landscape architects, or even engineers. You will know that they they are the criteria to increase the sense of place uh, of, uh, of, of an area. So I, I also uh, share with you the other disciplines so you can think about how you can make use of the hardware and software to support all these um, uh, integration of these ideas into your playscape. So first of all is age neutral play equipment. Uh, some of you may, may already start to ask me, so uh, what is age neutral? So what we're trying to see say is uh, you, you you, you know, there are parks in Hong Kong or other places all around the world that they uh, sort of limit people uh, uh, of certain age to play on certain, uh, play with certain equipment. So say like, uh, oh, this is only suitable for age five to 12. And this one is only for elderly. So we don't want to create that barrier. So that's why we say age neutral play equipment. Uh, on, the, on the left hand side, you see the elderly and the children playing together. And uh, on the right hand side, you see they are, they have to, uh, the elder, uh, sorry, the adults and the children have to play uh, uh, at the same time in order to uh, activate the equipment. So uh, you can you can definitely uh, just uh, pick and choose uh, equipments that can achieve that. You could just type play pay equipment uh, on 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 the. Uh, uh, in Google and you'll find a lot. So you can just pick and choose things that are appropriate and you can uh, try to integrate in your scheme. Like, of course, if you have, uh, if you're very lucky to have a product designer in your team, you can design new equipment as well. We are very, uh, we very much welcome that, but you need to be quite competent in order to do that. So that's why we suggest you uh, to pick and choose from uh, from existing equipment. Uh, playground in nursing homes. Uh, so this is quite uh, getting, uh, getting quite popular all around the world. Uh, why we are showing you this is because uh, people uh, or, you know, nursing homes, they, they struggle to, uh, you know, the, the elderly in the nursing homes, they, they really do want their families to visit them, but they may find it uh, a little bit boring. They just sit there and uh, just talk to them. So that's why the, uh, the nursing homes start to think about playgrounds that, uh, that can inter uh, encourage inter uh, interactive play and insert in their playscape. Uh, so these are just only two examples. Uh, you just adopt the play equipment and add some things that the, the elderly can uh, can uh, do different things that do exercise and stuff and uh, encourage us to play together and also encourage them to visit, uh, encourage the families to visit them often. So we want to encourage this idea in the Prosperous Garden as well. Um, play equipment, exercise and therapy. Uh, this is relatively easy. So we're not just thinking about play play equipment like, so we can uh, integrate different theoretical theories in, in the play equipment so say like therapy integrated play equipment on the left and also on the right uh, so it's multifunctional uh, multi-sensory play inclusive play so we have different things we don't need just to think about the uh, play equipment itself we can uh, install different things to activate or encourage people to play together so for example uh, trampoline play you know different people can play on it even people with disabilities who can play on it so we can in, encourage a, a multi-generational play. This, uh, the one in the middle is the interactive dance chimes. So like, you know, different people need to uh, step on it together in order to, to, uh, to activate it, to make sounds. So we, we think that this is quite effective in integration into the playscape. And the last one is sand play. We, uh, that is back to the sensory play idea. People can play together, like they can use different senses. It stimulates people to think and to, uh, and to, uh, and to uh, stimulate in uh, the, um, what's it called? Uh, the senses and also the, the uh, motor thinking skills. Uh, flexible and functional multi uh, multifunctional public space. Uh, it might be quite hard to integrate that in in Postal's Garden, to be honest. But uh, we also encourage different uh, the groups to think about what sort of hard and 
soft landscaping uh, can be integrated in, uh, in Prosperous Garden. Uh, and also you need to think about how uh, some people just want to relax, exercise and rest. So uh, this is just about to uh, create different functions for people to use. Interactive play by design. Uh, so this is a, a quite interesting case uh, in Taipei. It's called Parker by Plan B. Uh, what is so interesting is that uh, it is a uh, proprietary parts uh, that you can like, you know, disintegrate and uh, and also recreate uh, different forms. Uh, you know, the, the bars, uh, you know, the, the wooden sticks is the, the fixed one, but the, the color colored parts there, they can be formed into different things. They can uh, use different structures and different uh, different uh, play equipment. So it can be for different uh, uses. And also you can keep it very fresh so people keep, can keep coming back to this playscape. Oops. Uh, uh, the second part is public art and creative play. We just want to encourage people from different disciplines to work together. So this is a sculpture and also is a public art. So you can uh, increase the sense of place very effectively. And also it encourages people to play with it, uh, whatever they want to do. And, uh, you know, they can climb on it. They can sit on it. They can, you know, elderly can use it exercise. So uh, it's art. Uh, it's quite an interesting concept, which we encourage people to think about. Last of all is technology, play and exercise. So uh, you, uh, this is just to showcase what sort of technology is out there. You don't need to, uh, it might not be very, very difficult. Uh, there are already examples out there uh, you can research. Now, this is just a, a summary table of, of different aspects that we've talked about. So you can refer to this pay, table later on, but I want to go on to the slide to give you some tips. So what I, what I mean by choices, choices, choices is that like some people may think that uh, you can just uh, provide one or two and that's enough. Uh, but we want, uh, but people, when they use public space, they want choices, they want to do different things. They, they wanted to allow themselves uh, the opportunity to sit, rest, uh, I want to play with you or I don't want to play with you. So you need to think about different things. Uh, the second thing is about risk-free and injury-free. So I, I think uh, internationally, uh, people, uh, parents are also quite worried about like injuring their kids. Uh, but then it's also making play less uh, flexible or less challenging. So we want to encourage people to think about safety, but you're not designing to be injury-free. So this is a very fine balance uh, the groups need to think about. Uh, accessibility, inclusive design is very important. So like you can uh, upgrade the public space, but then it can still be inaccessible because of uh, the access points and all the other things. So you need to think about beyond the, uh, beyond the red line plan. Uh, materials and finishes, uh, this is to uh, remind the groups that you need to think about how that is going to be managed, especially uh, for for people to manage the, the places. Uh, if it is the finishes is not that great or uh, um, it's not waterproof, etc., then you will af you it will affect the management and also the budget to uh, to uh, to upgrade the space. So you need to keep it quite flexible, but at the same time you focus on safety. The last one I've already covered in terms of value management. You need to think about. Uh, how you can manage it properly and how to uh, increase co-management of the public space, which is a very interesting concept uh, for privately owned public space, but we, we can think about different aspects of it. So that's why I also encourage surveyors <laughs> to, to join the groups as well. Okay, so that's the end of my presentation. Uh, some useful resources for you. Uh, you can have a look. Uh, uh, different things like, uh, you know, standards that are uh, adopted in Hong Kong. You can be very creative, but Make sure you you read it and see what sort of uh, what sort of criteria you're looking at uh, uh, in Hong Kong, so you don't uh, just you know uh, propose something from the U.S. and adopt in Hong Kong. It might not work. Uh, yep. So I'll I'll leave it here. Uh, so I'll pass on to Sarah, who's going to talk about mechanisms. Uh, if you have other questions, we can talk about it at the panel section. Thank you. Hello, 
this is Sarah. So um, I'm from the competition secretariat and thank you, Karen, for explaining about all the ideas and exciting things of this competition earlier. And in this part, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. And especially in the mechanism, um, what, when do you need to submit um, all the different details? How should you do the submission? And what you should be aware of when you are forming your team? Okay, so there are a few important days that um, you need to you need to remember. First, of course, is today's briefing section. Um, but after today's um, briefing section, the Q and A, the question and answer period, will extend till the fifteenth of June, and our submission deadline and the registration deadline for our stage one will be on the thirtieth of June. For this, after the stage one, um, in the stage two, it will start from the 23rd of July to the submission date, which is on the 9th of October. So what's happening in, in this um, quite a long period? For professional category, we are going to shortlist six teams to enter stage two. All these six teams, they will be notified by the 30th of July so that we will start to have a Q&A period and we were going to have an engagement workshop on the 8th of August. So what's happened for the university category? After you submit your stage one by the 30th of June, which is end of this um, next month, you're going to receive your competition code if you pass the pre-qualification and the submission criteria. You will have this competition code so that you can enter stage two right away. There is no screening exercise for university category. For all six shortlisted teams under the professional category, you must attend the engagement workshop on the 8th of August. For university category, all the teams who have successfully en um, entered the competition, you will be encouraged to join our engagement workshop. Apart from the engagement workshop, another important day, apart from the 9th of October, which is the design proposal submission deadline, there is a public voting. We hope to engage as much as residents we can do or stakeholders from Prosperous Garden. So we are going to arrange a public voting from the 19th of October to the 26th of October. The winning teams will be notified no later, hopefully, no later by the 4th of November. And our competition award ceremony is currently be on the 14th of November. If there's any dates to be changed, we'll definitely notify all the entering teams and through our Facebook, emails, and also by calls. So who can enter the competition? First, we talk about university category. All the teams, they should have from three to six persons, having one people being the point of contact. And for all applicants, they should be receiving tertiary education and having a valid student identity cards in Hong Kong or in other universities. Um, there, if you are, um, if you are a student members or a graduate members of any professional or institutions in Hong Kong or in overseas, you can enter the competition as a universe under the university category. And as Karen's emphasized, this design competition encourages cross-disciplinary team composition. That's why in the competition brief, you will look at um, the marking scheme where cross-disciplinary team composition is having a quite a relatively important mark or weighting. So for professional category, same as around three to six persons in a team. And the applicants, they should currently be a member of the listed organization or employed in a registered company or, organize, or organization. We have listed some of the professional bodies locally, but if you, have, if you hold similar qualified professional bodies outside Hong Kong, you are always welcome to join this competition. Um, the same for university category. For professional um, category, you are strongly recommend to form a team with expertise in other disciplinary, including environmental design, playground design, play and exercise equipment design, public health, healthcare, elderly care, rehabilitation science, and internet of things. These are just our suggestions. So what do you need to deliver? So by the 30th of June, what you need to submit um, all the documents you can find in the competition brief on our website and also link in our Facebook.
you will need to submit a registration form, a conceptual design statement, a maximum of three pages of team portfolio, and a declaration form. For professional category, you will need to submit the same things similar to the university category, but um, for the conceptual design statement, you can, come, you, can, um, you can submit it in English or Chinese in both cases. But in stage two, you will need to submit hard copy of things and to deliver this hard copy to the secretariat office. And this includes A2 panels for the university category, a maximum of 10 pages of A3 detailed design proposal, one page of the tentative budget breakdown, and of course, a CD having all the soft copies of the above items in PDF formats. If you would like to submit a physical model or virtual reality or even video, it is not limited, so feel free to submit whatever you think can help to explain your ideas and design proposal. For professional category, apart from the same items or similar items as um, university category, you are required to submit one physical model with the maximum dimension of 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters length and are long and 300 millimeters high. All the submissions should be done with entry code, but not your personal names on it. Okay. So for stage one, all will be done in online submission, while stage two, as I mentioned, it should be hard copy submission with a CD-ROM or DVD with the soft copies co um, saved inside. So after today's briefing session, just a quick recap, what, or what are our events and the workshops. On the 8th of August, it's going to be happened at PolyU here for the engagement workshop, and the details um, will be the details will be um, will be announced later on after the stage one submission. And the public voting period in October. Um, for the whole public voting period, we are allowing over a week for residents or stakeholders around Prosperous Garden to come over. However, we have one called the Core Public Voting Days, which is on the 24th to 25th, where we will want all the shortlisted teams and university category teams to come over to talk to the residents, to interact with them, and to ask them to vote for you. And on the 14th of November is our award ceremony. For the prizes and awards in this competition, um, of course, we have listed it in the competition brief as well. So um, apart from the um, certificates of merit to all participating teams for university category, we're going to have a certificate to the most voted team in the public voting in, in October. And also we have got monetary prizes too. For professional category, we do have the certificates of merit to all shortlisted teams and also the certificate to the most voted team in the public voting. In this competition, we are very happy and honored to have all the supports from the supporting organizations, including the professional bodies in Hong Kong. And we do hope that if you have any questions, leave it in the chat room so that uh, we are going to answer it at the panel session. Okay, so after this details, uh, we are going to have Mabel from the property management office uh, from Hong Kong Housing Societies, and she is also the Prosperous Garden Estate in charge. And Mabel will explain to us about what is the site. What is this location or what's special about Prosperous Garden that you should pay attention to or how you can actually observe after that. Okay, so I'll pass the time to Mabel. So give us a minute. Thank you for Sarah's introductions. Hello, good morning, everyone. I'm Mabel, the property manager at the Hong Kong Housing Society's Prosperous Gardens, or PG in short. I'm delighted to be here to tell to you all about PG. 
But to start off with, as some of you may not be very familiar with the housing society, especially those from overseas, I would like to do a very short introduction about the housing society first. Established in 1948, the Housing Society is an independent, non-governmental and not-for-profit organization. Known to, the, known to the Hong Kong's Housing Laboratory, our mission is to serve the needs of the Hong Kong community in housing and related service through our innovative housing schemes. As a close partner of the government in providing affordable housing and related services, we have been paying an active role in the provisions of public rental units at affordable rents for low-income households and in the development of subsidized sales projects. More information on the Housing Society can be found on our website www.hkhs.com. Now about Postbarrow Gardens. It is one of our composite estates which provide rental flats and sales flats. We get to that in a bit. Yangma Day is an early development old district of Hong Kong. And the PG we see today, we paste the original Yangma Day six streets, which are Donggun Street, Leader Street, Chanshan Street, Public Square Street, Canton Road, and Qingping Street. As, and as you can see from this map, Leader Street and Chanshan Street are gone after the redevelopment, and Canton Road is broken into two sessions. Period to the redevelopment, Sixth Street is a con conglomerate of rapidly aging early post-war buildings built in 1930s and 1940s. Most of the buildings has six story, maybe seven story inclusive the rooftop. And without any time planning at that time, they were identical in design, two facts in story, no elevators and mixed usage for residents, workshops or warehouses. The streets were the playground of the children who lived in a small home. At that time, the sixth street had poor living conditions with minimal sanitation and community facilities. Without proper and routine maintenance under professional property management, the lapidations become an issue, resulting in concrete spawning, water seepage, disruption of electrical supply, etc. In 1975, 112 early post-war buildings were resumed to the government and subsequently the site was handed over to the Housing Society for Redevelopment. Under the Urban Improvement Scheme, the estate was originally built for rehousing the residents affected by the Marto Court redevelopment projects. It was expected that the new estate will provide recreational facilities which should be suitable for all age group of residents and to a certain extent, the surrounding community. The sites were completed in two phases, providing a total of one rental box and four sales spots. Phase one was completed in 1991 and phase two was completed in 1995. Postbarrow Garden is now located at number three, Public Square Street, Yangmati, Kowloon. Its size area is about is a one um, 40,600 square meter. It composed of 896 sales units and 662 rental units. Out of the 662 rental units, 157 units are tailor built for elderly persons, making it an integrated redevelopment model. Postbarrow Gardens offers car parks, shops, government accommodations, cinema, Podium gardens and a central gardens. For the shops, all are owned and managed by the housing society with total areas of around 4,600 square meters. Total number of shops are 12, including Hong Kong Housing Society, Elderly Resource Centers, HKHS, Exhibition Centers, Supermarket, fast food restaurant, convenience shops, laundry shop, etc. For the government accommodations, they are managed by the Housing Society with total area of approximate 1,700 square meters. Total number of premises are four, including day activity centers for the mentally handicapped, daycare for the elderly, kindergarten and youth center. As for the cinema broad, since November 1996, it has been contract 
Uh, and it's operated by Broadway Cinematic. It's a signature cinematic cultural landmark in Hong Kong for the movies industry. It provides a one-stop leisure destination with cinema, cafe, bookshop, and record store diverging from other cinema. It explores high-quality films from all over the world. Back to counting the recreation facilities. We now have on-site, we have the Central Garden, which is open to public from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Podium Garden, children playground, elderly fitness equipment and landscape area. It's about 8,500 square meters. Being the owners and the property managers, the housing societies offers tenancy and property management services. For the management of car park, it's outsourced and run by a car park operator. In order to make sure our service matches the expectation and the needs of our clients, we have meetings with our clients periodically. For the rental board, we have the mutual aim committee and for the sales boards, we have the owners associations and owners committee. PG's property management can divide into two major aspects, that's hardware and software. Hardware is normally regarded as the repair maintenance RNN in short, including ventilation system, file service system, water supply, electrical system, building or structural safety. Those are built-in facilities which are properly maintained by us. For the software, they are services including soft landscape maintenance, security services, cleaning services, financial management and community services. And as you all have read the competition brief, you will know that the housing society began to take notice the ever-growing aging populations of our society in the 1990s. The baby boomers who were born during 1940s to 1950s are now stepping into the retirement age. The baby boom with the advancement of medical science and technology, people being more educated and more concerned for healthiness, rapid growth of economics, etc., make the average life expectancy of Hong Kong is becoming longer and longer. In view of that, the Housing Society has been devoting significant resources and embarked on experimental elderly housing projects and services that uniquely cater to the needs of senior citizens, building on the concepts of aging in pace. At present, Around 40% population who are living in our 20 rental estates are 60 or above. Aging in place can be understood as a concept of allowing elderly persons to continue living in their homes and family and community healthily and independently, as long as possible in their later year. With the proper intervention at the community level, we prevent and delay the fatality stage of residents where they have to depend on institutional care. According to the local study, an overriding 89% of elderly households prefer community living and to be cared in the community. Being able to stay in a familiar environment would help the elderly to stay socially active and feel secure. In order to promote aging in pace, the Housing Society has launched the Aging in Pace Scheme, or we refer it to the AIP scheme is an integrated part of property management services for 20 rental estate, covering five major domains of home safety, healthiness, autonomy, happiness, and able brain. Regular exercise and social activities coupled with other interventions would definitely help to prevent cognitive decline. For every dollar we invest in the scheme, we save $4.8 for our society. That can be reallocated for other purposes and bring benefit to the society as a whole. Now, back to our competitions. We hope that the design of these competitions would cater to the needs of all age groups, ranging from the tallest to the OO. In the next couple of slides, we will talk a bit about design considerations covering the question slide, exactly which part we are designing, what facility are there in the area, design restriction, residential considerations. 
So for the first questions, exactly which part we are designing? From the layout plan shown here, the red part is the open space with free entrance. Two from Public Square Street and one from Tongkun Street. The open space of PG includes a central garden, children play area, elderly fitness zones, shelter area and landscape area. But according to the schematic drawings, the pathway from Dongkun Street to Public Street, Square Street is the emergency vehicular access. Pass one more. Yeah. It should be clear from any obstructions. Besides being the grantee, the housing society has to manage the open space. Any modifications should comply with all governmental regulations and any local organizations want to have any activities in the open space, the housing societies has to wrap the application first and seek period approval from the lands department. So folks link a list for your EC reference. Some more information that may that you may find it useful is the existing demographic information of PG. As of 30 April 2020, total population of the rental blocks is 1,568, an award which elderly populations who age 60 or above is 479, is around 31%. For the sales spots, we are sorry that we have no such figure in hand. Underneath the ground floor level is the car park area. Like all car park area, most pie dots and facility conduits are placed in the car park ceiling. Any damages to the waterproofing la layer would cause water seepage in the car park area. And last but last the least, when you are designing your proposal, think of the potential impact of your new design. As you can see from the image before, our PG is R-shaped. Think of the placement and distribution of your facilities. Will the potential noise can be condensed, would be condensed and magnified if put too closely together? That's all for my presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Michael and Karen, for the introduction of the of the prosperous garden and also the competition idea. And this session, we are going to answer some of the questions that you have posted earlier in the chat room, and also some FAQ that we have received since the launch of the competition. Okay. Um, so first, is there a limit on the number of team members? So the number of team members is limited to a minimum of three persons and a maximum of six persons. So if you have more than that, feel free to split into two groups for your submission. And next, um, can I submit a proposal with friends as a member of their team? Definitely yes. So participants can also submit proposals as members of a team. However, we only accept proposals submitted under personal identity and that of uh, the entity of a company. So if you are a university graduate and a student member of a professional organization, are you eligible to enter the competition and which category do you belong to? As I touched on earlier, if you are having the university graduate, if you are a university graduate, you can enter it at, under the university category. Okay, given that all other team members in the team also belong to the university category. So, for Karen, if you have no experience in place-based design, 
Are you still eligible for the design competition? Or if so, how should we prepare ourselves? Yeah, we very much encourage people from all other disciplines and sectors uh, to join this competition. And that's why we deliberately open it all to people. And uh, as I said in my presentation, like we believe that everybody has uh, has a say in the uh, public space design. So uh, don't worry about not having expertise. It's about getting enough people and have different experience and talk about it and then come up with a design. So uh, yeah, think about uh, different things from health perspective, how to encourage people to play together and even, uh, you know, value management and uh, also cost. So like different people can have different things. So say like if you're a lawyer, you can still have the same public space. So no worries about forming teams. So if we don't know people from other disciplines, would the competition organize pairing or matching of groups? Um, it's very nice that um, Poly JTBC, they have thought about this multidisciplinary idea. So the competition organizers will not be officially organizing a matching of different groups. However, they have created a platform on LinkedIn where you can click, um, you can have the link from our website, competition website, or later on when we share this, um, when we share this briefing slide, you can, uh, you can just click on this hyperlink. In this group, you can meet other people from all the different industries. So you can talk to each other and do the matching by yourself. And we do hope you can find a group match from this platform. So if we are having any university professor here today, can you integrate or use the competition as a part of an existing course? And can we introduce mentors, organize their visits, or other experiences that will enhance the learning experience and outcome of the team? And how, as a university team, are we allowed to seek help from professors, friends, professionals from our network? Right. Uh, like from, from JCDC's perspective and also from Housing Society as well, we decided that we definitely encourage people to uh, to uh, form teams and seek help from the professors, and that's the and that's part of the reasons why we also uh, opened this new category to uh, invite university students to join. And we do encourage you to approach professors uh, to to seek advice uh, because we really do want to see how we can help this project uh, to realize. So we very much emphasize on implementability. So if you are struggling or if you don't know uh, if your if your ideas are valid, like we really do encourage you to, to seek help from professors. Now coming to the point about organizing site visits, uh, we, we uh, of course we do want you to uh, uh, to have a, a very much uh, hands-on experience and to do uh, use experience uh, uh, you know uh, site visits and in order to know the site a bit more. Uh, but we really do want you to uh, think about one thing because uh, it is like, oh, there is a privately uh, owned public space that is open to the public there is a lot of uh, stakeholders in the area and it's also like you, you know we have a lot of residents just living right about it so if you want to organize a site visit please approach us uh, approach jcdc and the secretariat which uh, you will see the email in in the information below if you want to have more detailed explanation we do also encourage you to approach us if you want to speak to the other uh, uh, the, the users uh, before you talk to them because we don't want to disrupt them. But as a public space, like you can go in like you know very very small groups, so maybe one or two people. Like it's an open space. We don't we won't be discouraging you to go. But at the same time, please pay attention that and, and be considerate that uh, there are you know there, uh, there are a lot of residents here, so uh, we don't want you to disturb them. So uh, approach us first if you are uncertain. So I think Karen has also answered, give the answer to, uh, to this next question is that how can you engage with the residents or community groups? So Crossroads Garden is a public open space that opens from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. But of course, um, in order to minimize the disruption to the residents daily living, apart from the engagement workshop on the 8th of August, if you really want to do any additional engagement activities, please, seek prior approval from JCDI uh, DC and also the Hong Kong Housing Society. Okay, this is an important question. <laughs> when and will the place based design be taken into further action? Would you like to try that? <laughs> or do you want me to tackle that? <laughs> Maybe I could start first. Yeah. So um, for everyone, this competition is an idea competition. 
So the objective of the competition is to provide a foundation for improving play spaces in Hong Kong, including the prosperous garden public space, and facilitating intergenerational harmony. So for the housing, um, from, from housing society, we, we, make, we will um, reveal the feasibility of the design proposal first before we take some considerations. Yeah, because we have to consult the, uh, we have to obtain the previous approval from the land department as well, and also to gain the consent from all stakeholders, including the uh, resident organizations. So at this stage, we can't commit any, anything. Sorry. Yeah, so the schedule of the set improvement work will be confirmed in due course. But remember, this is an idea competition. So be creative as you can, but of course, with consideration of the implementability, obviously. I'm going to add one point before we close. Uh, we want to emphasize that, uh, GCDC wants to emphasize that we don't, we definitely see our process garden as a very pretty place. And it's already very good as it is. Uh, it is one of the, uh, you know, uh, old many times. <laughs> it's very much a very great place with a lot of landscaping and people are very happy with it. It's just that this collaboration and thanks to housing society, they really do want to explore the idea of intergenerational play uh, to, uh, as kind of a, a, uh, a uh, backbone for upgrading potential estates in Hong Kong. So this is, so that, sorry, this is a definitely an ideas generation exercise, but but <laughs> with potential implementability, not not exactly at just a uh, process garden, like you could, you know, different I uh, different uh, you know developers or even the government when they see this uh, this has generated some good ideas, they can take it elsewhere or even internationally. So that's why we want to emphasize on implementability, but let's not focus on like you know this exact design will happen at process garden. How's that? Yep. So is it mandatory to include all six design considerations generated from the season four co-creation workshop? Yeah, uh, we we really want to see the continuation of the uh, co-creation, uh, you know, considerations being taken into account because after all, we invited seventy people to do the co-creation, so that has some kind of basis and some kind of consensus on how we can take it forward. So we will agree to to consider them, and that's why we made it a criteria in our assessment and. It, counts of 15% of stage two. So uh, consider them and see how you can integrate in the design. Thank you, Karen. And next, can I submit my design proposal in Chinese? Uh, yes, for stage one, because we know that quite a lot of, uh, we have quite a lot of uh, interest uh, from international and from local uh, local students as well. So uh, we will open it uh, as a, uh, as a uh, channel uh, to encourage them people to apply. But if you manage to enter into stage two, all the materials will have to be English. Uh, so if you need to do it as Chinese, uh, sorry, to, co to be complemented with Chinese or any other languages. So uh, if you need help uh, to do translation work, uh, we might have some funding available for, for you to do that. But please remember, uh, for stage two, you will have it bilingual. Thank you, Karen. So apart from this prepared question, we have received a few more new questions from our chat box. So I'm trying to read it out and so that um, Karen and also Maple can help us to answer it. So the first question is that, it is that, that only six groups will be shortlisted towards stage two for the professional category. How about the university category? Will any screening to be done for student stage one submissions? If yes, what are the screening factors? Yes, uh, there, well, we don't have a, screening uh, screening section for the university category to be honest with you uh, because we want to encourage a lot of people to apply and to uh, to test your uh, to test your imagination so uh, we only have uh, uh, stage two for the professional group but uh, you need to make sure that you submit very validated documents so valid documents in order to get an entry code and proceed into stage two so please make sure you read the project brief very sorry the competition brief very carefully for all the instructions another question that we have received is that is there is it available to give us the site drawing file or pdf so i think that is my question so an extract of the schematic drawing is available on the ppt 
and the drawing style of the site will be uploaded to the competition website later. So always remember, our competition website will include all the updated information, announcement, or any changes to the details of the competition. So try to visit our website frequently when you are preparing for your competition. Okay, so the next question, do all team members for professional team need to attend the engagement workshop? Right. Uh, Answer is no. Uh, we encourage at least two team members to attend the session because you will get a lot of information there because we emphasize on the user experience. Uh, so we we want people to listen to it. Like, but at the same time, we are very conscious of the social distancing situation we are having. Uh, so that's why we uh, we say at least two people from your team. Uh, uh, to, to participate and that would be fun. Like obviously if you want more team members, you everybody wants to join, like we can make arrangements, but let's see uh, what, uh, what sort of uh, situation we're, we, we're having at that time. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Um, I think the next question I have, uh, I think I sort of replied it um, in the FAQ too. Um, if, um, can I confirm that PG site is a POS PD? Is it open to the general public and 24 hours? So the Park Forest Garden, as we have mentioned, it is an open space owned by the HKSAR government and um, household housing society as a grantee to manage. And the space opens from 6 a.m. to 10, 11. to 11 p.m. Sorry, it's extended. Six. Yes, it's extended. Okay, so you can visit it a bit later. So it's from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily. But of course, to minimize the disruption to the residents as well, do seek prior approval if you really want to do an engagement um, so feel free to send email to um, the competition email and also from the secretary office will reply you as soon as possible. Okay, so next one is, next question is, do we have to maintain the existing levels of the site? Uh, we'll need to get back to you on, on that uh, because we need to discuss it with a housing society as well. Uh, so check out the uh, frequently asked questions later on. We'll have to answer that for you. And then I think we have two more questions here. If our team consists of overseas university team members, can they not attend the public voting day or is there any other online way to conduct the public voting? I think it is strongly advised that at least some members of the team can attend the core public voting day. However, if the entire team is based overseas, we will consider alternative ways like, for example, online for you to join the public voting upon request. More details will be released about the public voting after stage one. Okay, so currently the last question is, how do we conduct a public voting section? Do we need to show up in that day? Well, okay, so now uh, public voting, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, and uh, Mabel, we currently have two mechanisms. One is on site, one is online. So uh, if it is online, like obviously like it will be quite automatic and you know, people can just uh, do likes and they can shoot videos and put it on there and do a self-explanatory uh, discussion there as well. Uh, but on site, it will be a little bit more difficult. Right? So uh, like if you're overseas, then definitely well, we will see what we can do. But if it is, if you are in Hong Kong, we really strongly encourage you to participate that day. And I think Sarah has already mentioned one day uh, we will actually organize some stakeholders to be present uh, at the, uh, on the day. Uh, so you can talk to them and uh, get more advices and more suggestions to, uh, to finesse your design. So we really do encourage you to participate. And I think similar to the previous, um, the previous questions, I think more details of the public voting will be released after stage one. And of course, how we arrange them um, the core voting days and what are the details and how's the rundown, we'll definitely talk to each, um, each uh, applicant so that you will, you will know how to prepare for it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So let me check if we have more questions. So if you have more questions, feel free to look at the chat box right now and then we'll get back to you. Okay, let me check with us FAQ table. So the last 30 seconds for you to type out the question. <laughs> okay. So um, before we close the briefing section, uh, we would like to thank you again for joining us today, despite the very rainy 
rainy <laughs> weather in Hong Kong. And um, okay, so we have the next question here. I think this is the last one. Uh, I have a question regarding proper, prosperous garden. It is known that it was built to house those affected by Matao Gok redevelopment project. Is there any information related to the number of residents in prosperous garden right now who were once living in Matao Gok, or most of them have been moved out? So, mm, Nigel, sorry, we don't have the exact number of at hand. However, to the best of my knowledge, there are only very few residents left who were affected by the Mato Clock redevelopment projects. They, um, maybe we have to check and answer later. Mm, thank you. So uh, remember to check uh, our competition website so that our, apart from the FAQ that we have answered today, all the rest of the questions or new questions that we receive will be uploaded on the competition website. And also this video will be uploaded as well. And um, so I think with some editing, um, everything will be updated to our competition website by Monday. Okay, so from today onwards to the 15th of June, uh, our FAQ or the Q&A session is still open. So feel free to drop us emails or even phone call about what, um, the inquiries that you have about the competition. Yes, and I do think um, on behalf of the competition, I hope that you found this um, exercise exciting and also inspiring because it is we feel the urge or the urgency in town to have this intergenerational blessing. So try to throw all your creativity to give us your insight on what is the best intergenerational playstate design should be for prosperous garden. So do you have any closing remarks from Karen and also Mabel? Do you want to start first? Oh yeah right. <laughs> okay. I have some I have some uh, some for you for everybody. So uh, there will be a lot of videos, uh, EDMs that are coming up soon. So there are two different sets of videos. One set is from, uh, we delivered uh, together with Housing Society, they shot some videos interviewing our stage two panels, uh, panelists, uh, sorry, not panelists, jurors, which is very, very exciting. So we really encourage you to, uh, to keep an eye out for them on our website and our Facebook page for them. Uh, so we can also get their views on what are the aspirations uh, what are there uh, that uh, you can integrate into your design and second set is videos is actually from Polyview. Uh, so we we uh, if you remember what I said at the beginning about academic impact and knowledge transfer uh, so uh, poly departments uh, we have asked them to, uh, to give us their views on what what sort of applied research is out there that we can integrate in this uh, uh, place-based design and uh, it's uh, you know, it's quite difficult to translate uh, things that are very, very hardcore academic uh, knowledge into a actual project. So we try to encourage people to think about the cross section there, uh, especially for uh, professionals uh, that might be or more concentrated or more uh, knowledgeable in terms of design, but they might have forgotten about you know what's new out there, or they they are not very aware of uh, what's the new technology out there. And for students, we will also encourage you to think about things that are beyond book knowledge, think about application. So uh, check them out as well. Uh, it will be released gradually uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, so make sure that you sign up for our Facebook page. Uh, keep checking our website. And uh, you know, if, you, if you're really still struggling with uh, forming teams, uh, make sure you check out our LinkedIn page to pair it. Well, thank you, Karen. And thank you, Mabel, for today. So uh, we do hope to receive your um, your submissions very soon. And remember, the first deadline is the 30th of June. Okay, so wish you a good, uh, have a good weekend, and we wish to see you in the engagement workshop probably. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.